man. Mam mam Hi prof Can you hear me? Yes sir Hello prof Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Dr. Prince. How are you, Dr. Prince? I'm fine, Prof. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I hope uh, everything is fine over there. Now you can lunch. Yeah. I think you're very busy with the new assignments. Uh, it is, it is, but uh, still manageable with other external collaboration. Okay. Okay, ma'am, this, this, uh, prof, this uh, crowd is uh, basically all the postgraduate students. Uh, they are faculties, uh, prof. Okay, Many of them are faculty. And few of them are, we have our research scholars. Okay, great. So, you want to start first or? Uh, shall we start, Professor? Can we start? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay, Professor. Good morning to one and all gathered here. Education is a progressive discovery for our own ignorance. On behalf of our college, I would like to extend our sincere and warmest welcome to all the guests, participants, and students from various institutions for research excellence and academic development program. Organized by the Department of BCom. Today's topic is publications in top tier journals. Today's guest we have Dr. Lawrence Aryogeswami Sir, Dean of Graduate School of Business, Jai University, Malaysia. He received his PhD in Human Resource Development, specialized in human capital. Courses he has taught include economics management, human resource management, entrepreneurship, statistics for social science business research and many other research related courses. He is actively involved in research in the areas of applied applied and basic research and on acad academicians, career development and cyber entrepreneurship amongst business students in private higher education. He has more than 65 papers ac accepted and published in national and international journal articles. He was appointed as a paper reviewer for World Applied Sciences Journal. He is appointed as an external examiner for PhD, PhD Viva for selected public and private universities in Malaysia and overseas. He is, edit, he is the editorial board for the American Research Institute for Policy Development. It is a great pleasure to have you here, sir, and with respect, I call you to share your thoughts for today's session. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Um, hi, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, extend my gratitude and uh, thanking to, to have me here, especially Dr. Aguila have invited here. 
and all the team's members here and also uh, PhD scholars. Okay, today's topic is something is uh, every scholars will dream to uh, to know the strategy or probably some kind we call a guide to publish in a, a good journal in the publications. So I have uh, come across a lot of obstacles, a lot of uh, challenges, especially uh, published in Emerald journals and also a good reputable journals. So just today, my sharing will be more on my own experience and and what are the strategies that uh, young scholars to, to, to use in your own life to publish their journals. So when you think about uh, publishing in the top journals, okay, and of course we have a Scopus journals, we have a Thompson ISI journal, Thompson CSI, ISI, then we have SSI. All these are index which categorize as a high impact. Okay, when, whenever you submit your paper into the high category journals, the percentage of acceptance level is only about 11 to 15 percent only. Remember, out of 100, 100 papers submit to the journal, only about 10 to 15 papers will be accepted. So the rejections or the failure of the papers is very, very, very high. So that's why we can see uh, uh, as a young scholars, when we embark on research and started to write article and submit for the top journals. So chances for us to get into this journal is very, 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 very low. And every researcher will experience this. Okay, and I'm sure you ask any professors, renowned professor, they will tell the same story to you. So that is how they, they, they go through the pain process. So and many scholars have asked me, what is the uh, uh, strategy? You see, we must have a uh, uh, good luck. Or we must have some connection with the editorial board. Or we must have some uh, some collaboration. My experience is only a pain. Every time I send, because they have huge uh, review, sometimes they reject, sometimes they ask for minor uh, changes. And it will take about easily about one year to two years. Good luck. That's everything is about pain. It's a pain process. Okay. So we can see first about uh, introductions about top journals. So why we cannot get through in the top journals? One of the main reasons is lack of experience. Okay, as a being a young scholars and just embark on research, we need more experience in writing in the high yield journals. So experience is become uh, uh, first challenges. Then we, we, we need to uh, submit more papers to this and explain ourselves about their comments, their, their language proficiency, their expectations, what they like to see, or we need to read more journals in high tier journals. So when you read this, you will get a kind of uh, uh, illusions about the, how a top tier journals is being reviewed, is being written, and how it can be accepted in high level. So these are the things that you need to experience in the process. And you also need to identify the cost and act accordingly. So this is where I learned. I learned based on the, when I submit my paper, and I receive the comments. I see and read about the comment and thinking how this examiner or reviewer have commented this paragraph, these issues, this problem, this methodology, this part of conclusions. So from there, I learn and act accordingly. So these are the strategy or we can see these are the kind of uh, my own experience in the publishing and the high tier journals. So for today's sharing class, I have two topics to cover. First is choosing the right topic. 
I believe that many young scholars, they are reluctant to understand, to choose the right topic. So that is my first strategy for today. The second strategy is writing strategies. There are few writing strategies you must need to follow in order to publish in ideas journals. So today class, today our sharing is only two points. So when you leave my, my sharing today, you're going to remember only two points. The first point is choose the right topic. The second is writing strategy. If you really have these two, you can go in a high tier, even not in a high tier, but probably a good Scopus Index, Emerald's Journals, and uh, Science Direct Journals. These are reputable journals in among social sciences and the business cluster. Okay. So let's move into the choosing a topic. Of course, uh, when you embark on PhD, again you have the, this problem whereby what topic do I have to choose? What is the best? Uh, what is the current topic in this uh, area? So these are the frequent questions will arise in your mind. Similarly, the same thing when you are choosing a topic or title for the reputable journal. So when you look at all reputable journals like a tier 1, tier 2 or ABCD uh, listing, you can see the title is very, very catchy, very simple and very attractive. So the authors spend more time in articulating the title correctly and simple so that you could understand. So my experience when you are write title, I choose a title that very very simple. Don't confuse the readers, don't confuse the reviewer. Okay, make sure you choose a very articulate title. Okay, so uh, do not waste your time in choosing uh, a old topic or uh, we call this a dead topic. So dead topic means something that is already old and already people know for example, job satisfactions. So you go to any uh, a journal, you type job satisfaction, plus I believe satisfaction, customer satisfaction, all these are well researched. So today we talk about job engagement. Okay, when you're engaged, meaning you're satisfied. If you're not engaged, meaning you're not satisfied. Very simple. So now if they have changed the trend, so when, whenever you want to have a very uh, practical topic, that's where you can reach to the high tier journal. So the title must be very practical and the, the topic must be very new, must, must be very exciting and you must, the topic must have some hunches to follow. Hunches mean uh, is why, why? Whenever I see the title, I find that hey, why is this happening? That's kind of hunches that you need to create. I was in one of the Grant Selection Committee. And that's one title comes in our panel in the board. Okay. And that topic is, the title sounds like this, Internet Addictions. Have you heard about this Internet Addictions? All the while we only heard about drug addictions. Drug addictions, yes, very common. Okay, But when I see the word Internet Addiction, the entire panel was was stop. Hey, what is this topic talking about? Internet addictions. And we have approved the proposal because of this single word called internet internet addictions. So these are the the, the specialty or the uniqueness of the authors to come up with something a great title, a unique title, exciting title. So the title should uh, to raise the unjust level. Hey, why? Why these titles are different? Okay, that is how the choosing a title must be very attractive, uh, must be very simple, must be uh, able to attract people. Okay, and do not write papers with the uh, breakthrough ideas at first. Don't however you become a first one to tell the ideas. Because uh, many papers, especially in the high rank journal, okay, we need something of very conclusive, very comprehensive knowledge. It's not something of a very surface level of knowledge. Okay? So you try to have more extended literatures and write something very creative. 
So these are the things you need to have in your title itself. And write your subject very intensely. And avoid to have some comment or negative remark on the title. Negative remark on the title. As a readers, as a commentary and on, as a reviewer, we would like to see uh, something a very positive title. If you if you notice that even even this pandemic, this virus called Wuhan virus, it was initially started in 2019. The first label was Wuhan virus, and and China is against this word called using Wuhan because that reflect the country image. And continuously, then they changed the COVID nineteen, and today we call coronavirus and so many virus. I think uh, India and, and Malaysia is not new for this virus. So see how this country put a stand. They don't call this as Yuan virus. This is very negative to my country. So similarly, what I am highlighting here is don't ever use the negative words in the title. Or even in the abstract, you you use a negative word. You use something a very catchy, attractive. So I notice if you go Excuse and use me, professor. Yes. Meaning the slides. I don't have a slides. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, the first point for today's sharing is about choosing the right topic. If you make your topic uh, uh, attractive, creative, and relevant, and that's where the first steps to go into the high tier journey. So, writing a title is a, itself is a skill. Okay, so spend more time on writing your article, your title. So that is the first point for today's sharing. The second point for today's sharing is uh, is writing strategy. I'm sure all of you are good in writing, and and you know writing newspapers is different. It's it's totally different. Writing a movie script is totally different. Writing a Give an example. Probably a bulletin, a speech, or probably uh, newscasters. So they have a different way of writing, style and. But for the academic writing, we call this a scientific writing. So when we call a scientific writing, should have something additional, whereby your study should have a very. Uh, uh, proven uh, with the evidences and with the clear logical. So these are the things we need to adhere in the writing strategies. Let's look into the writing strategies. So under the writing strategy, there are three components. One is introductions, body, and conclusions. So when you create a, a paper, your paper must have three parts. So you take any uh, good journals, you can see that they are clearly have three components. The first is so introductions. The second is called body, and third we call conclusions. So when you develop your writing strategy. Of course, after that you come out with the abstract. Then you go into the introductions. Writing introduction is something that uh, we need to learn, or I, I would say you need to spend more time in the introduction and conclusions. My experience submitting paper in Emerald. Every time when I receive a comment. Is on the introduction and the conclusion. If you ask, you ask any of your uh, scholars who have uh, submitted a paper in a high rank journal and they receive a comment, it will be much much on your conclusion part. They will clearly write many things on your conclusions. Your conclusion is most important in the idea journals. So please spend more time. In writing your introduction and your conclusions, because body is 
is normally you have the literature methodology results. It's very common in any body of your uh, empirical studies. But you come to the introductions and the conclusion make a difference in the high tier students. Normally when you see the conclusion will have about sometimes it's two pages, sometimes it's uh, one and a half pages. People are thinking what they are writing a conclusion for two pages. And even my PhD conclusion is only about half pages. So this is the, the difference when you go for high tiers journals. So come back to the, under the writing strategy, the first point is introductions. How to write a good introductions? Your introduction must be very tentative. Must be very tentative. Make sure your introduction pages is about two pages length. Two pages length, you know, two pages length. Don't go more than two pages. This is a technique. This is a strategy you must employ. When you write a good introduction, you must have at least less than two pages. Don't go beyond two pages. The most appropriate is about eight to ten paragraphs. Okay, eight to ten paragraphs. Okay, and in the introduction, you need to discuss the real example. Because when you go think about high tier generals, high tier generals always think about great impact to the society. Great impact to the society. Your paper, what is contributing to the body of knowledge, body of practices, bodies of policy making. So therefore, you must lay some practical and real example in the introduction itself. That's why we now we have a systematic literature review. I'm sure some, most of you have heard about this word, systematic literature review. So when you run the systematic literature review, you will get some statistics. So bring that statistic into your literature and prove that, that you have done a rigorous, extensive literature on this area. Take example, internet addiction. You go and get the uh, key the internet addictions in the systematic review, literature review, and get how many thousands of articles are written on internet addictions. And during this space time, during the pandemic time, how many people have written? And what are the, so by giving that real evidences, real example, will make your introductions more rigorously and accepted in the high life, uh, high impact journals. So that is the technique you must use when you write your introductions. Okay, and when you write your introduction, don't ever use I, I, never the researcher of V. So whenever you use I in the introductions, definitely they're going to reject your work. Okay, of course the the, the plagiarism should be very, very lower. Try to avoid plagiarism, of course, some definitions, some, some statements are, 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 are bound to be not to change, therefore you keep the word. But try to avoid a plagiarism. Use your own word and also your analogies to write your introductions okay and the most important thing is avoid use your own citation even though you are the one of best scholar in the world you are the best when writing a, another paper don't cite your own papers citing your own papers become self citations so don't cite in the introductions column, but you can cite in the later part, probably in the body or in the conclusion, but never in the introductions. So under the writing strategy, writing introduction is something that you are attracting the readers, attracting the reviewers, attracting the examiners to look into your work and endorse this is a very good. So, writing the introductions, you must have less than two pages. You must have a clear, logical, uh, real, exp uh, real example, and don't use I. And you have must have a very clear, logical argument. So, these are the 
things that they expect in the introductions. So after the introduction is uh, preparing the body, the main body, where you're going to have uh, some kind of conceptual framework, then you're going to have some statistical tools, then you're going to show the results. Okay, this is a very common in any any uh, form of the article body. So what I'm going to share with you is in the top ranked journals, they have a, some kind of a very uniqueness in outlining the article. Outlining the article. So this one you can just can uh, you can see a few article which is uh, published in the journal and you can make a, a benchmark. Okay, I don't so use the word copy, but you use a benchmark to write a clear outline. I think uh, this is the ability of the authors and the writers. I'm sure you have seen, seen a many Tamil movies in your life, but certain directors, uh, script writing is very unique. Very unique. And that will attract attract you to watch the movie more than one times first. Even you could remember the the sentences until today. So because the writing skill, how you plot is very important. So when you read more article from the top tier journals or reviewing some of the good journals, you will get some skill of knowing the what kind of outline is better. So creating an outline is very, very important. After you develop your outline, the second is to develop consistent and simple notations. So makes makes the 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 flow of knowledge a very consistent because when you write you can see what you are writing okay when you do editing process sometimes we will see the real problem whether from the paragraph one to the paragraph two or point one to the point two do you have the connection. So, for the good movies, normally we see the introduction, body and conclusion. We can see the flow are very clearly articulated by the director. Similarly, when you write an article, you are the director of the article. You should have the connections. And that should be very consistently argued. So, that is a very, a very important guide for you to write your body. Then in the in the body part, and another part that very important is uh, uh, strike a balance between theory and applications. These are the most important part where you need to articulate the, what the theory that you use for this model and how this theory is applied in today's world. You don't copy about what happened in 2015. But we are in the 2021. So what kind of applications that we are going? That is where you will get a good marks. But application part where you must relate to the current or the future. Plus, after uh, I, I being a researcher for 15 years, I can create a kind of clear boundary I think we have seen we have heard this word called before Christ and after Christ I'm sure all of you have heard this before Christ after Christ because they, they, in the, our, our civilization they, they split in two categories before Christ and after Christ and I'm categorizing before COVID and after COVID I'm categorizing because whatever research done in before COVID, you can revisit the same topic, same area, and redo it again with the element of COVID today. Take example, teacher's performance. We talk about lecturer's performance. Of course, 
is a physical performance online teaching so the medium change you still can go and reassess on teachers performance by online so these are why i'm saying whatever studies have been conducted before covid we can revisit and we can redo that is a biggest opportunity that covid have created for the researchers because whatever findings or whatever conclusion they have created the past is may not be relevant today do you agree of course it's not agree it is not acceptable in today's after the covid so this is what we call application when you think about the theory and link to the today's application you must clearly justify the current application is different and that where you can understand to publish in i journal okay and you try to summarize the theoretical finding in propositions or maybe you have a hypothetical sometime you have a proposition sometime you have a hypothetical to so try to summarize the entire finding into your hypothetical or propositions so these are the things that as a good reviewer for high impact journal they look into the what are your proposition what are you suggesting and when you do a summary of your work try to use the table format and and clearly show your finding into the very simple way remember don't ever hide your literatures your finding try to portray your finding into the very simple table and when i read your table i could understand that these are the findings these are the conclusions so writing a body you need a clear connections and able to summarize it in a very simple way and try to have more applications how the theory and application can be shown in your body so that will leads you a better standing in publishing in a high order journal okay so we have covered introductions we have covered the body and the last one is the conclusions as i said earlier writing conclusions is most difficult whenever i receive my comment from the reviewer i moment i open the conclusions they have thoroughly have gone through my conclusion and criticize and sometimes they deleted all my conclusion i feel so shame so this is a reality so conclusion part give more weightage time to write the good conclusions conclusion can goes to about 1.5 pages sometimes 2 pages so under the conclusions what you need to do is summarize the contribution briefly in your conclusion and this is a biggest mistake ever all the young uh, uh, scholars will do is they do just do a very conclusion like like a summary of the paper i've seen this like a summarize the entire paper no what you need to write in the conclusion part is uh, what are you contributing for the body of knowledge body of practices must be clear what your paper is trying to justify trying to identify take example internet addictions when i conclude the internet addictions i must say that the young generation is spending about almost 6 to 8 hours a day in the internet and therefore they are in a different world so i must justify i must show that so i need to summarize a few contributions and the contribution must be very heavily contribute not a simple contribution you must show that is heavily contribute that is a conclusion and another point you can add on in the conclusion part is 
is a discussion on the implications. If this addiction, internet addiction prolong for another 10 years, we are going to create a internet savvy generation. So this is you must show the implication in the future. And therefore, if this happen, what will happen to the policy? The policy of the change. Take example class. I think before COVID, all the schools are not allowed to bring smartphones or whatever phones. Today, the entire learning is in the smartphone. Can any schools can reject smartphone? You know. So today, in the school level, they should make a amendment the policy. They should allow students to bring smartphones. So this kind of amendment in the policy making you should suggest. So in the, when you write your conclusion, think about what you are heavily contribute. And based on that, what are the greatest implication? To the implication, what are the changes into the practices, into the policy, theory? That's where your 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 your, your journal or your article can go to the high rank journal. So when you think about writing a, a high impact journal. So these are the three elements are important in the writing strategies. So to conclude what I have shared with you for three sharing, the first is about choosing a right topic, like first point. The second point is about writing strategies. Under the writing strategy, there are three key points. Writing introduction, body, and conclusions. So these are the three things. Uh, my own experience class, my own experience in in writing a, a, a good journal is your passion. How passion you are towards writing. Because when you see the rejections or probably a, a comment from the reviewer, Sometimes your tears will just come out and you don't have a feeling to continue or pursue with the review and resubmit back to the journal. I've experienced, I've seen many authors uh, after they submit, they got a review and they don't like. So please, your consistency and your, uh, your passion towards the journal must be very high. Okay, so these are the things. And also class, when you write good journals, today, today, now, we go to any editorial board, I'm sitting in a few editorial board. One of the things they require is systematic literature review. Remember this word, systematic literature. At least one component of your literature need to be systematic literature review. They want to see that. One, one of the key points. And of course, they want to have high order and statistical tools like uh, SCM, PLS, and all these are very important. Okay, don't use your simple order analysis. Use the high order analysis. And also, show what you are uh, creating, the impact. Impact to the uh, body of knowledge. Take example, I give example class. Uh, now we have a pandemic and I've, I'm sure there are many researchers, scientists have come up with uh, different, different uh, vaccines. We have Pfizer, we got AstraZeneca, we got uh, Sinovac, we got Sinovac. There are so many, you know, Johnson, Johnson, there are few. But which one gives you a great impact? I believe India also have their own vaccines. Which one is it give you a great impact? So, when you think about you're doing a topic on internet addictions, and you see about in the in the, the past studies, they have a few studies have conducted internet addictions. But now you must strategize yourself how your paper internet 
addiction is going to give you a greater impact than other peppers. Therefore, your pepper is easily can position in the first rank or second rank of the journal. So the impactful is important. Okay, uh, take example a Panadol. A person who created Panadol is a uh, who can uh, you go to any part of the world. Uh, paracetamol is a scientific name. Uh, is a is a highly regarded. Every country will use this for the fever. But meaning that how this Panadol, this paracetamol medicine, have reached how many million millions of people? Uh, that is called impactful. How many thousand people that your creation can reach? For example, creating a, a, a medicine or creating a, some idea, but none of them is using it. And no one is using it. So I'm slowly linking to the citation. Today, when you publish 10 papers and no one is citing your work, I'm asking you, are you a good professor? Are you a good researcher? Let's say you're only publishing one paper, but 10 people are citing your work. Ah, that is what we need. So when you go for high tier journals, first they look into the impactful, the second they look into citation. How many people are citing your work? Plus I got one paper, I think he cited about more than 500 uh, citations. One paper. I don't need to have a 10 papers to have 500 citations. One paper is already reached 500 citations. So this is how we need our paper to be established, be impactful to the community, society, and also the body of knowledge. So with this, I conclude my presentations, my sharing section for the young scholars that when you think about writing a good article, first choose a good title. Don't choose the title is very old and nobody is bothered to read about your title anymore. Choose a title area is very, very exciting. So when I use the word internet addictions, everybody, wow, internet addiction is something that new, new word was coined in your head today. So try to think about how to be attractive and relevant in today's society. Second is writing strategy. Write your introduction, conclusion. Think heavily on your introduction and conclusions and your body of knowledge. And by writing a good, impactful, and you're going to have a great citation. That is your, your greatest success of your paper. When many people cite your work, I'm sure you're going to be very happy and you're going to say, this is my biggest contribution to the body of knowledge. Okay, with this, I conclude my sharing. Okay, now I hand over to the organizer, uh, Dr. Aguila, Prof. Aguila and of Dr. Prince and for the Q&A sections. Prof, it was a very nice session. You have given many inputs to our uh, research scholars as well as to our faculties. Even I enjoyed many points from this. Even I have many takeaways. It was a nice session. It was nice listening to you. Thank you, Prof. Any uh, questions? Yeah, there are many um, chat. There are many uh, good comments in chat box. Over to MOC desk. If anybody is there, it's very informative thank session. For, thank you, sir, for such a wonderful session. It was extremely an informative and valuable session for us. The session was very informative and useful for research and publication purpose. I would like to thank all the esteemed delegates and. For, the, for their presence and contribution for this session. Thank you. We'll join you tomorrow on day 5th of Faculty Development Program that is Statistical Tool for Social Science.